I work for Google and so can you. Working at Google is seen as prestigious because all of the benefits that the company gives to its employees from the free food to the free massages Google has a bunch and a variety of benefits that I might even talk about in another video. But there is this myth associated to the fact that to work at Google, you need to be the inventor of Facebook, you need to have a cage match with Elon Musk himself, but that's not the case at all. Today, I'm going to be telling you about how anyone can work at Google if they follow the simple steps that I mentioned in this video. But before we get into the video, I've noticed that a lot of you guys are watching my video but are not subscribed to the channel. I guarantee you that if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get your dream offer in no time. Now the truth of the matter is, is that working at Google or any company as a matter of fact can be broken down into two simple steps. Number one is getting the interview. Number two is acing the interview. Now let's discuss the first step, which is to get the interview. Now to get the interview, the first thing that you need to do is that you need to know where you're going to be applying to. You need to do some research on that. And to do that, you need to look out the positions that you're going to be applying for. You need to find the job descriptions of the companies. For example, if you want to be a software engineer at Google, go to LinkedIn or any website that has their job description and look out what Google is actually looking for in their software engineers. And this can be applied to many other companies. If you want to work at Apple, for example, example, you can look at what Apple are looking for in their software engineers. What technologies are they requiring? This will allow you to kind of create a path for yourself. Will you learn these technologies and you'll become the person that the job description is asking for. And when you have this, then we can move on to the next step, which is building your resume. Now, the most important thing that the company is going to look out for is your resume because the resume is the main piece of content that communicates you to your employer. And a lot of people tend to underestimate the importance of their resume. So they never get the resume reviewed, they never actually polish the resume. The first thing I want you to do is to build a resume that is very catered to the job that you're applying for. So for example, if you're applying at Google, you want to cater your resume according to their job description. My general tips for your resume would be that you want to show the impact that you've had in your previous work experiences. Now you can do that by portraying the metrics that you have gained over time. The other thing that you want to do is that you want to keep your experience very, very relevant to the position that you're applying for. So for example, if the company is looking for a web engineer, you don't want to put anything in your resume and your experiences, which is not related to web engineering. Now, Google in general, you'll find that their positions are very, very generic because they don't actually hire technology specific, at least for software engineers. So your interviews and everything is going to be very, very language agnostic. So what you want to do is, is that you want to portray yourself as a person who has had impact in their previous experiences, and that will help you to stand out to Google. The other thing that matters a lot in general are referrals and Google also places a lot of emphasis on referrals and I'm gonna tell you that if you're gonna apply for a company don't apply to them without a referral even if you have to wait one or two days to get a referral it's probably worth it to get that referral and how can you get a referral LinkedIn is the first place that you can start off you can reach out to different people you can spam people you can blatantly ask for referrals people are happy to give you referrals and why is that because if you get hired they also get a bonus and it's the same at Google another thing that I have a different opinion on is cover letters are highly highly overrated don't waste your time on it and i know that this might be a controversial opinion please let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about cover letters but in general what i think is that cover letters are not even read by recruiters and you'll find that a lot of big tech companies they don't even require cover letters they're not going to even ask for it and it's true for google as well is that you never have to write a cover letter at google and i personally never wrote a cover letter for any company rather i would spend that time looking out for referrals which would actually help you to to stand out in your application. Now, my last point regarding getting interviews is that a lot of people tend to underestimate the importance of LinkedIn. A lot of people don't have the LinkedIn set up in a professional way. They don't have a professional photo and that is going to hurt you in the long run. Why is that? Because LinkedIn is a great place to network, a great place to ask for referrals. I used LinkedIn personally to get all of my referrals because I randomly spammed people. I took a single message, catered it to 30 or 40 people, spammed it to them in connection request, one of that person will definitely answer you and they'll be happy to give you that referral. And that's how I personally got my referrals because obviously I don't know people at all of these 200 companies, right? So I would use LinkedIn as a tool to get my referrals. Another thing that you guys want to know about referrals that I didn't know back then is referrals are of different types. If you know a person very closely, they're going to write a better referral for you because they're going to tell the company that I've worked with this person. So that referral would have higher priority as comparison to maybe a referral that you get over the internet. 
internet randomly so i would suggest you that if you have someone that you know personally that can refer you well and good if you don't then at least try to get a referral because that's better than not having a referral but i'm just trying to tell you that if you have someone that you've worked closely with then that referral would definitely have priority over the one where the person doesn't know you maybe now moving on to the second step which is acing the interviews now once you've cleared this resume screening stage and you have your interview set up now it's a level playing ground for all and this is kind of a scary thing but it's also kind of a comforting thing because i think that it gives a fair chance to everyone out there now in order to ace your coding interviews you need to have a good grasp over your data structures and algorithms now data structures and algorithms can be learned in many ways maybe your university courses teach you you can also find various online resources that can help you to prepare data structures and algorithms once you're comfortable with that you can move on to a problem solving platform for example like lead code or algo expert now i've made a video comparing lead code and algo expert so you can check that out as well i've also made a video where i teach you how to use lead code effectively so that your problem solving skills can evolve quicker than ever now there's a lot of fear going into a google interview or to a facebook microsoft interview that the interview is going to be super hard and they're going to tear you apart but that's not the case google interviews were one of the easiest interviews that i've ever given and believe me when i say this that a lot of smaller startups actually have harder interviews because smaller startups tend to be more selective the reason that i'm telling you this is that when you're going into a coding interview your mindset is going to matter a lot you can be the best person at problem solving but once you have those nerves going into an interview you're going into the interview thinking oh this is a google interview you might be bound for failure because you might just choke up during the interview and fail it so make sure that you don't have this mindset going in that it's some kind of gigantic stuff that they're going to put forward to you it's not going to be that so let me just give you a brief breakthrough of what the interview actually looks like the first round is going to be a coding challenge that's like 60 minutes two questions mostly lead code easy to medium questions moving on if you do really well on the coding challenge you can actually skip the phone interview which is a 45 minute interview over the phone usually also lead code easy to medium question right and then you have five on-site interviews which is one behavioral interview and four technical interviews so the behavioral interview is supposed to be answered using google's company principles and you can read on that online and then there are four technical interviews all of them are not related to each other so there's a chance that you might actually end up getting string questions in all four of them but there's also a chance that you might end up getting dp on all four of them i think a lot of people are in general afraid when they have more interviews but in my opinion they're actually better for you when you have four interviews you have a greater chance to prove yourself a lot of people believe that if they do four average interviews that's better than doing maybe two very good interviews and failing two of them but believe me what google is trying to look out for is that they're trying to look if you can do exceptional in some of the interviews so if you do two interviews really well and you mess up two of them they're gonna still hire you over the fact that you did four average interviews because they're trying to give you the chance so that you can prove yourself a lot of the people that i've met what they do is is that they give one bad interview and then for the rest three of them they already give up because they're like they self-reject themselves that they have no chance of standing up and that's where you can mess it up because trust me if you fail one interview look out for the next opportunity prove yourself in the next interview give that mindset to yourself that going into the next interview you're gonna prove yourself that you can be a googler and that is going to work out for you because this is something that most people don't know of how google evaluates your interview and they're not gonna look at oh whether you have failed some interviews and they're gonna reject you they're actually looking out for exceptional performances in interviews and they're gonna give you the benefit of doubt on that so i think in the end it's all about staying consistent and believing in yourself i think that if you have discipline if you put that discipline into your problem solving and practice once you get that interview i think it's all about your problem solving it's going to be all about your practice you don't have to be a genius in order to know how to solve these questions a lot of these questions are just repeated patterns if you have the allotted practice then you'll be able to recognize these patterns and once you start recognizing these patterns you'll realize that it's actually easy to solve these problem solving questions then people tend to make up in their minds so i hope that you found this helpful please reach out to me on linkedin or in the comment section down below if you have any questions at all or if you have in general some discussion related to the points in the video if you enjoyed the video then please like the video as it helps you know the algorithm to push it or whatever but it also helps me to stay motivated and make more content for you guys and yeah as always see you guys in the next video